What's up guys, Iovo here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your very own YouTube or Twitch overlay using Photoshop. Now if you guys didn't notice, I did get a new intro made, so shout out to Resource Effects for making the awesome intro, and also I'm going to be starting to do more advanced tutorials as well on this channel. You know, I've covered pretty much all the basics of Photoshop, and now I think that it's time to kind of expand and do some more advanced tutorials that aren't going to be super hard, but they are going to give you a better outcome of the product. So hopefully you guys do enjoy those. And with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead, go to File, New, and Create a New Document. Now make sure the width and height is set to the resolution of your videos or the max resolution. So if you're doing it in 1080p, you're going to make it 1920 by 1080. Now if you're doing it in 720p, you're going to make the width 1280 and the height 720. And then make sure the background contents are transparent, and then click on OK. So we're just going to zoom out a bit. There we go. Now the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and select the polygonal lasso tool. So you want to go over here and hold this tool and make sure you have the polygonal lasso tool selected. And we're going to make the shape of the top bar. Now before anything, what we have to do is we have to set guidelines for the actual project. So what you want to do is go ahead and press Control R or Command R if you're on a Mac. And you are going to activate the rulers. Now go to the left side and drag a ruler until it's in the middle. It's going to snap once it's in the middle. And then there we go, we have a ruler that goes straight down the middle. Now using the polygonal lasso tool, what you want to do is you want to click on the left side of the document. And this is going to be how tall the bar is going to be. So I'm going to click over here. And there we go. Now you can see once you click, you're going to have this line coming out. So what you want to do is you want to go about, you know, seven eighths of the way in to the document. Uh, to the left side and then hold shift so that you're creating a straight line and once you have your designated length just click while holding shift and you're going to create another point now just go down diagonally a little bit and then click and then go all the way to the middle until it snaps hold shift so it's a straight line click again then you can go up and click and then just go around the document and finish the shape and there we go we have a shape made now what you want to do is go ahead and press, oh, my bad. Now what you want to do is go ahead and press Alt Delete. And what that's going to do is that it's actually going to fill in that shape you just made. Now what you want to do is go ahead and copy this shape so we can make the second side of the overlay. So just press Control J and a copy will be made. And then make sure the top copy is selected Then go to Edit, Transform, and then Flip Horizontally. And then click on the Selection tool. Make sure that top layer is still selected, hold shift, and drag this second half to the other side until it snaps into place. And there we go, the bar is already done. Now to remove the ruler, just control click on the ruler line and just shove it to the side and it should be gone. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and take these two images and convert them into one image. So just hold shift and click on both of the images so they're selected, right click and convert it to a smart object. Now I'm just going to move this bar up a bit so that it looks a bit cleaner. And there we go. Now what you can do is go ahead and actually make the bar look nicer. So what you can do is go ahead, right click, go to blending options. And you could of course give it a stroke. So maybe a white stroke of 5PT and give it that two tone look. You can also go ahead and give the actual layer a gradient as well. So say you want to give it maybe a blue gradient. You can click on the gradient stoppers and give it a dark blue to light blue light blue gradient like so. And that looks pretty sick. What you can also do is go ahead and add textures to the actual bar to make it look even better. So I'm going to go ahead and go to file place and place a texture I already have. And that is called the blue grunge texture. And there we go. Now what you want to do is make sure you have this new image positioned on top of the actual overlay. And then right click on that image and create a clipping mask. And then that image is going to go inside of that bar. So this looks pretty cool to me. I like the design of it, so I'm going to keep it. And now the final thing we have to do is just add text and our social media icons. Now to find some icons, all you have to do is go ahead and search for social media icon pack. And there are going to be a bunch of websites which have packs available. So I'm going to go on the one by flat icon because they have transparent images all in one color and then click on download pack. I've already downloaded it and then just right click and extract the files and they're going to show up right here. Now to put them into Photoshop, just go back into Photoshop, go to File, Place, 
and then just place the images so they were on my desktop. And we are going to go ahead and find simple icon social media, go to the PNG files, and then just download and or place the icons that we want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the YouTube one and it's going to appear and I can just drag it wherever I want. Right now I'm just going to go ahead and just place the four icons so I have them readily available in the document. All right, now I have all of the icons placed inside the document. I'm going to go ahead and create the text now. So just select on the text tool and click above and type in all the text you want. So I'm going to go ahead and make the font smaller and select a font that I want to use. So in this case, I think maybe plain crash would look really nice. All right, there we go. We'll make the text a bit smaller. We'll make it 40 and then just type out everything you want in one line. So as you can see in mine, the order is going to be Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Google Plus, and in the middle over here, I'm going to have some big text. So I'm going to go ahead and just type that out now. So I'm going to go ahead and type in Zyogo TV, which is my Facebook. And then I'm going to press control or just tab over a bit. So just make sure you count the tabs so it's even. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then type in my YouTube, which is Zyogo. Tap six more times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Tap six more times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put on the Twitter, which is Iovo underscore, and then tap six more times, and then put in the Google Plus, which is Iovo, and there is our text, evenly spaced out. You can also do this one at a time. So as you can see right now, the Iovo in the middle doesn't fit well. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually delete that, and just tab a few more times, and then to actually center this, just Control click on the bar layer, go to Layer, Align Layers of Selection, Horizontal Centers. And there we go. Now what I can do is separately create a new layer and make sure the text tool is selected and then type in Ziova once again in my desired font size. So maybe just put in the Z, that would look really cool. Make that like 200, nah, too big. Make it 100, there we go. And we can just center that to everything once again. So control click on the bar, layer, align, layer selection, horizontal centers, and then it looks good. Now the next step is to go ahead and just align these uh, icons to the text. So select the layer and then just drag it to the text. And to actually align it to the text, you can control click on the four text, go to layer, align layers to selection, and then vertical centers. And this will vertically align to the text. And you can also resize it by pressing control T, holding shift and resizing it. But make sure you have everything set in place. Now that we have everything in place, the final thing we have to do is just go ahead and add some styling to the text and the icon so they all match up. So for the text, we can go ahead, right click and go to blending options and give it some different effects. One thing you can do is give it a drop shadow and make the opacity 100 and this, and then just mess with the distance spread and size. So I'm going to make the distance zero and then make the spread and size 11 and see how that looks. That looks really nice. You can also give it a gradient overlay if you wanted to and then press okay. And we're going to do the same thing for the Z. So just right click on the text layer, copy layer style, which is over here. And then right click on the next layer and just paste that layer style. And as you can see, the Z has the same shadow effect. And then we're going to go ahead and make these text or these icons white. So right click on an icon layer, go to blending options, go to color overlay, make the color white. And then we're going to give it a drop shadow as well of 100 opacity, one distance and spread in size of maybe 11 press OK, then just copy the layer style by right clicking and going to copy layer style and paste that layer style for the other three icons. And they will all have the same layer style. And there we go. You are now done your epic overlay. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this tutorial. To save your image, just go to file, save as and save the image as a PNG. But yeah, that's about it for this video, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iobo. And I'm signing out.